Imagine that in the next five years, you get lucky with your cryptocurrencies or startup, and by 2027, you end up with $10 billion in your bank account. A dream, right? You may think that would be enough for you to live like a king and never again worry about money. Well, if CBDCs get implemented during this time, and it looks like that will be the case with the agenda of the Great Reset, then all of your 10 billions could become effectively worthless. You would have all of that money, but you wouldn't be able to use it. You may think I'm kidding, but there's no catch. It's real, and to understand why, take a look at this video. Aren't our analysis on CBDC, in particular for the use of general, to the general use, uh, we tend to establish the equivalence with cash, uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control, absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, she, to what cash is. Uh, if you didn't understand him well, this gentleman is proposing to some extremely powerful bankers that our money should have automatic constraints that are not related to the amount itself we have in a bank account. So even if you have a lot of money in your bank account, your debit card could be declined because a central bank like the Federal Reserve could apply other non-financial limits in the way you spend your money. Limits such as a social credit score, a carbon credit, and many related creations. Here is an example. Let's suppose you write a comment on Twitter saying that this old man has a very beautiful belly. And he does. He should be proud. The problem is that, in theory, this old man and others just like him could claim that you were fat phobic, even if you were trying to be nice and with a penalty that could end up limiting the way you spend your money. I know it's a bit extreme, so let's take a more realistic example. If politicians are concerned about the environment, they could, in theory, limit the consumption of beef on a weekly or monthly basis. They could also give people a monthly quota of carbon credits, such that even if they have the money, they're not going to be able to buy a lot of products that undermine the environment. But some of you may be wondering, who is this old man and why should we take his speech so seriously? His name is Augustin Guillermo Carstens Carstens. And that was not a mistake. His name actually has to Carstens. Kind of weird. He is a Mexican economist who serves as the general manager of the Bank for International Settlements. If you've never heard of this bank before, well, they're just the most powerful bank in the world. They're basically a central bank for central banks. It's the oldest international financial institution, and they promote themselves as a forum for discussion about global monetary policy. But the BIS also provides banking services, such as currency conversion, gold transactions, foreign exchange transactions, loans, and many other banking services to central banks and public institutions. 
They have a very, very interesting history. For example, they were even bankers for that Austrian dictator with a weird mustache. By the way, if some of you are interested in this story, I could make a documentary about this and many other secrets of the BIS that most people have no idea about. It's gonna take a lot of work, so I need just a little bit more than 150 subscribers to spend so much time. Thanks for your help, but anyway. The discussions in the BIS are influencing central bankers around the globe, even in the United States with the Federal Reserve. So what Mr. Augustin said in that clip is probably something that most central bankers around the world would agree with and eventually implement in their own countries. If you think that's too far, be aware that most countries, probably yours, are working on CBDC projects right now. Here's an example from Europe. The European Commission is working in several projects, but one of these is a blockchain green money for carbon-free economy. In Benefici project, we successfully designed and distributed an energy efficiency coin. We propose to design a retail central bank digital currency to distribute money to economic agents, meaning households, enterprises, NGOs, local governments that are abating CO2 emissions and to favor the circulation of this CBDC to accelerate the trade of goods and services that promote a carbon-free economy. This climate CBDC could prepare for a digitalized carbon-free economy, enhance financial inclusion, and would advance Europe to the forefront of financial and monetary innovation. You may have noticed that I'm not a big fan of CBDCs, but even if you have a different opinion from mine, it really doesn't matter. We must all acknowledge something very important, which is CBDCs bring a huge potential for abuse around the world, and that's extremely concerning. And there's no accountability. Americans didn't even directly elect the people in the Federal Reserve. But what about Mr. Augustin and Klaus Schwab? Who are these creepy old men to dictate what we must all do? People around the world didn't elect them, and the consequences could be terrifying. For example, let's suppose you are one of those powerful politicians and as such, you want to intimidate and silence everyone that criticizes you. It would be really easy to do that with CBDCs. China is already kind of doing that. They have an entire social credit system pegged to their CBDC that are extremely frightening. Please don't kill me, Xi. I love you, man. And let's be serious. If we want to keep freedom of speech and democracies around the world, then we must raise our voices now before it's too late. Right now, the Federal Reserve is asking people what they think about CBDCs, and I urge you to strongly oppose it. We must at least try to fight for our rights and values. The tyrants of the future won't be politicians like Stalin, Mr. H, or Nero. They will be CEOs of tech companies, bankers, venture capitalists, and even some malicious programmers. They won't use explicit violence to control us, but rather, 
they will create an environment of collective fear that one tiny little thing we do could limit the way we spend all of our money and trigger several other problems, no matter how rich you are. You said the wrong thing on Twitter, used an illicit substance, ate too much red meat this month, sorry, you're not gonna be able to use your money as you desire. And this technology is right here, ready to be used, and unless we act now, many future generations will be affected. Some people are already losing access to many platforms, bank accounts, and credit cards because of their political opinions. Some that I personally disagree with, but still, I don't think it's right to take away all of their rights and dehumanize them because of their opinion. And unfortunately, a lot of people think that having a lot of money is enough to avoid persecution from governments and survive in any political system. And it's partially true, some cryptocurrencies can help you with that, but even most millionaires I know are not anticipating this future. Here's what you can still do. Buy precious metals. Certain cryptocurrencies that provide anonymity such as Monero, artwork, collectibles, anything the government won't be able to take away from you. Buy now, before they start limiting the way you can use your money. Do you really think they'll let you buy gold with CBDCs? That's not gonna happen. I will end this video with a very important message that you must share with those that you deeply care about. Money is an illusion. It can depreciate and now even have its usage limited. If you can't spend your money the way you want it, it doesn't matter how much you have. And unless you see beyond the rat race, you will own nothing and you won't be happy.